Convicted sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein is dead of an alleged suicide. And this has ignited the biggest conspiracy furor so far this century. It's a story of unimaginable importance. Epstein was pimping underage girls to some of the richest, most powerful elites in the country, scads of politicians among them. His testimony could have taken them down. And watch how fast it evaporates, like a rain puddle in a desert wind. Within a few months, we'll have a hard time putting Epstein's name in context. Many aren't seeing the bigger story here, a story, well, more of a nightmare, that transcends the death of a creep, enabling his creepy associates to evade justice. This is a story of truth and logic being raped by phony journalists and cheerleaders for the state. It's a story of how the forces of evil, not cartoon characters from stupid cape movies, but real-life monsters in silk suits with big jobs at corporations and omnipotent government agencies, how they have won again. Remember the financial meltdown when they declared Wall Street banks too big to fail? Now there are scumbags who have proven themselves too powerful to be stopped. The safari park. You're killing me, Larry. Hello, Larry. Hats off to Larry. Larry. Fucking Larry. 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 Larry, get into bed now. The biggest conspiracy controversy of the last century was the Kennedy assassination, and there was plenty of reason to question the official findings, for the simple reason that it was allegedly a lone gunman, and that gunman was quickly silenced by another lone gunman. That doesn't leave many people to blab or interrogate. Ask any cop. It's rarely forensic wizardry or Sherlock Holmes-level sleuthing that, uh, gets criminals convicted, it's their own big mouths. My favorite psycho killer, the late Charles Manson, might never have been caught had not one of his loquacious, uh, freaky chicks in jail on an unrelated crime bragged to her cellmate about killing Sharon Tate and company. Well, the cellmate told the cops and the rest is history. But before Susan Atkins blabbed, Charlie wasn't even a suspect. So there's the power of big mouths. Which is why the next big conspiracy hubbub after JFK, that uh, 9-11 was some kind of inside job by the government, is truly crazy and implausible. The scope of that atrocity, the enormity of it as an inside job, would have taken many, hundreds, even thousands of co-conspirators. No, 9-11 was done by 19 terrorist pieces of shit. Period. Although I do not buy the implosion of Building 7, <laughs> nobody's been able to adequately explain that one. After 16 years, that's right, 16 years, the report from the National Institute of Standards and Technology was published. And it said, in essence, that Building 7, mostly built of steel and concrete, burned down. <laughs> well, okay, I guess. I recall seeing a James Bond movie with a girlfriend. Couldn't say which movie it was, they're all formulaic, but in the last reel, as in nearly every 007 movie, Bond breaches Blofeld's super-secret headquarters, which are usually built on the scale of the Mall of America. Helicopter pads and airstrips and monorails and state-of-the-art control rooms that would shame NASA. And staffed by many hundreds of guys, and my girlfriend whispered to me, Don't the guys that build and work in those places talk? And that little movie theater comment forever colored my opinion of conspiracy theories. As my old friend Tony Spamante always says, If you want to keep a secret, whisper it into an open grave. Ah, the code of omerta. But I think Tony would have to amend that to include, And put a bag over your head so surveillance cameras with facial recognition software can't read your lips. 
The more people involved in any conspiracy, and make no mistake about it, almost everything is a conspiracy, the less likely that conspiracy will remain concealed. Regular listeners know I'm a word freak, and the way words are paired can alter their meaning over time. Most frequently paired with conspiracy is the word theorist, which kind of undercuts validity right off the bat. Next most common pairing is nut. Hmm, that conspiracy nut. <laughs> there are plenty of conspiracy nuts, and they do dream up conspiracy theories that have zero logic. But still, conspiracies make the world go round. In fact, anytime you get two or more human beings in the same room, odds are a conspiracy will be hatched. Kids love conspiracies. When my brother and I were small kids, we'd sneak downstairs when mom and dad slept a little later and watch the Saturday morning cartoons. We'd devour all the Cocoa Puffs. We'd build forts out of the couch cushions. But what really drove the fun was not the sugar rush from the cereal or the cushions or the cartoons. It was the sneak factor. Pulling something off without anyone's knowledge. We loved that shit. Here's a tip for newer dads of difficult toddlers. If you need to get them bathed or fed or to bed or nursery school, make it a conspiracy and see how fast they get with the program. Tell them it's a secret. Whisper the plan. Make them promise not to tell their sister. All of a sudden, they'll find taking a bath the most amusing, compelling idea in the world. We are hardwired to conspire, and as we age, the only thing that changes are the players and the stakes. A history teacher once heard me talking this way and commented, Oh, so you subscribe to the conspiracy paradigm of history. <laughs> and I was like, what other is there? Name any political movement, upheaval, revolution that did not begin as a conspiracy. But you guys get together and decide they want to change and the system isn't working and watch how fast shit starts to happen. From the Boston Tea Party to the French Revolution to the Russian Revolution to the burning of the Reichstag to nine out of ten assassinations, hell, go back to Julius Caesar and beyond and you're looking at fucking conspiracies, not conspiracy theories, conspiracies. So how the hell have they gotten a bad rap? How did theory and nut become the de facto suffixes for the word conspiracy? Two answers, government and commies. And these days, that uh, is frequently the same thing, Comey and Brennan and the like. Nothing makes politicians and bureaucrats shit their pants faster than the C word. And when they whiff one in the offing, they will do anything to stop them. Anything. Nothing is off the table, including and especially murder. Why are penalties for anything that threatens the power of government so severe? Why are federal prisons unimaginable shitholes designed to make convicts suicidal? The term maximum security is mostly bullshit. Handpicked words to soothe and stroke naive people who buy into the idiotic crap like uh, Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. People who believe other people are supernatural in their abilities to kill and escape. It's a fantasy. You can keep a guy locked up behind chain link fencing and barbed wire just as long as in a cell with five foot thick concrete rebar. Of course, the prison bureaucrats always have a go-to boogeyman to justify their positions. Usually it's a dead psycho named Thomas Silverstein. Was he dangerous? Yeah. And he managed to kill a guard while at an alleged high-security prison in Illinois, which pretty much spawned the whole supermax security prison idea. Which is actually why the death penalty is a good idea. You get these mad dog cons who are doing life, why shouldn't they kill guards or other inmates? What are they going to do, give them another life sentence? So they stick them in Supermax, which is, in fact, 
as close to a living death as you can get. Imagine a cement box measuring 7 by 12 with a single slot of glass 4 inches wide by 42 inches high. But if you look out that slit, you see nothing. The cells are designed and positioned that way so a prisoner cannot see any structure or foliage or roadway making it impossible for him to even orient his position. The cells are utterly silent. Even the crapper has the piping buried in concrete so you can't tap out a code to a, another con by another toilet. Meals are pushed through a slot in a steel door. You get one hour per day outside the cell, but even that is still inside the prison. Most prisons have a bifurcated mission, uh, punishment and rehabilitation, but not those places. Because governments, which ultimately are nothing but people, can be every bit as vindictive and vicious as any criminal gang on earth. And not just the U.S. government, the Russians, British, Germans, they all have their hellhole prisons. Not that criminals should not be punished. Plenty of them should be killed. But why not just kill them? Or let the victims' families kill them? So the government so fears conspiracies, they even made the word itself a crime, huh? Thinking about robbing a bank with your pal? Well, if you get caught, they won't just charge you with bank robbery. They'll charge you with just talking about that robbery, thinking about it, and planning it. That's a conspiracy charge. <laughs> the FBI has recently said that conspiracy theorists are a domestic terror threat. How about that? Now, commies hate conspiracy theorists because so many are critical of the government. And don't forget, the state is the commie god. So accusing the state of wrongdoing is heresy and blasphemy. Conspiracies not only shape the political landscape, they also configure corporate America. From middle management right to the corner office, companies run on conspiracies. It need not involve violence or mayhem. But that's how competent people are pushed out, departments are decimated. A few chooches get the ear of the board, cook up some PowerPoint presentations, and presto, careers are derailed and jobs are lost happens all the time. As we age, our conspiracies tend to get more serious, but we still love putting them together. <laughs> Every practical joke has a conspiratorial element to it, from the pail of water balanced over the doorway to the cream pie in the face or the unexpected water balloon. We just love doing shit like that. When I was in high school, I had two reliable co-conspirators, Frank and Jimmy, Many of our conspiracies, had they been discovered, would have gotten us expelled. Today, there would be cops and felony charges and jail time. If you'd like a taste of the mayhem we caused, it's in a trilogy, Vengeance. It begins in the March 2017 archive at thatlarryshow.com. And the reason our little coups were successful was, there were only the three of us, and we kept our mouths shut. Just enjoying the chaos and hilarity we created was reward enough. We didn't need backslaps or attaboys from our so-called peers. So now we have this Jeff Epstein. Or did. Is he really dead? He's got more question marks around him than the uh, Riddler's leotard. First, they refer to him as a financier. That's always kind of a shadowy job description, isn't it? Of course, he lends money, and a guy who lends money is a guy familiar with the concept of leverage. A guy who knows how quid pro quo works. Not a dumb guy at all. A guy who would know how to protect himself should shit go sideways, like keeping records of the clients of his Lolita Express junkets. At the time those flights were regular, it was a different world. No cell phone video, no social media. Ubiquitous digital documentation was quite a ways off. So Epstein's playmates were carefree and careless. Underage females 
were considered fair game with a wink and a nod. But still, his clients were the elites. And even after Short Eyes Jeffrey was convicted of sex trafficking, many of those elites still attended parties at his mansions. Because elites really are above the law. As far as Epstein and company were concerned, what happened on private jets and private islands stayed on private jets and islands. And then it all blew up mildly when he was convicted in 2008. Then more plaintiffs emerged, and suddenly Epstein was again front-page news. There was a lot of dispute over his actual worth. Was he a billionaire or just a millionaire? As if he was merely in the $900 million zone, he really wasn't all that rich. <laughs> the guy had a seven-story townhouse in Manhattan, a Palm Beach mansion, an estate in New Mexico, a big pad in Paris, a private jet nicknamed the Lolita Express, which ferried his pals to his very own Caribbean island, where everyone could play, voluntarily or not, in complete privacy. Epstein ran in some fancy circles. It's alleged that former President Bill Clinton was a passenger on that jet 26 times with multiple visits to the island. Jeffrey was pals with British royalty and kingmakers of every stripe. And then he's about to tell all for maybe a lighter sentence. And he's dead. Why would anybody want him dead? But back to government, Epstein was, without question, the single most important inmate in any prison in the U.S., maybe in the world. And as my pal and fellow Chad Dad Ty Beard said, either the government is corrupt and allowed powerful people to kill Epstein, or they're so incompetent they couldn't stop a suicidal guy from killing himself. Now, when Kennedy was killed, there was a functioning press staffed by actual journalists, not mouse-clicking mushrooms. Guys that went out and got the fucking story. And that they did. There were statements from ER doctors that worked on JFK, and guys that ran the hospital where he died. Christ, even Oswald himself got FaceTime in front of dozens of microphones and TV cameras when he uttered the famous words that lit the jets on the conspiracy theory. And those words were, I'm just a patsy. Perpetrators like to say, you got the wrong guy, or I'm innocent, or I wasn't there, or I don't know what you're talking about, or the smart ones don't say a word, but nobody ever says, I'm a patsy. What have we heard from government officialdom about Epstein's death, huh? Jack shit. Someone named Shirley Skipper Scott was in charge of the prison at the time of Epstein's death. And nobody's heard a goddamn word from her. In fact, she's already been reassigned. Hmm. Talk about government closing ranks. Talk about zero fucking transparency. And her official title was acting warden. What does that mean? Maybe it was ironically accurate because what little info has been uncovered about her indicates that she had woefully insufficient experience for that job. Why hasn't there been a press conference with somebody from the Fed prison system with some fucking answers? The guy who runs the whole shebang, which had a uh, $7.3 billion budget, a guy named Hugh Hurwitz, has not answered queries from the press. He's declined. Huh? What? the fuck gives him the right to do that? He's not working for a private company. He's a public servant. Where is Yu's accountability? But maybe Yu Hurwitz thinks he's working for a private company because last year, we, that would be you and me, my fellow taxpayers, we awarded Hugh and his upper echelon pals who run the Fed prisons $1.6 million in salary bonuses. Why the fuck should any government employee get a bonus ever? And second, let's see the criteria for those bonuses. <laughs> Maybe everyone going out for coffee when Epstein got offed 
was part of that bonus, huh? This is how far we've fallen, folks. The government does what the fuck it wants and answers to no one. Even though you pay for it all, you don't get to ask questions. Tough shit, fuck off. How convenient that there was a camera malfunction near Epstein's cell, huh? Oh, and Epstein had said someone was trying to kill him just a few weeks before, and he had been found semi-conscious in his cell with bruises around his neck and taken for medical attention. And he had been meeting with his attorneys for as much as 12 hours per day. Hey, does that sound like a suicidal defendant to you? Anyone who doubts the existence of the deep state and its capability of doing anything is fucking naive. Epstein was killed. And the deep state's grip on this nation is so tight, they don't even give enough of a shit to make it look like anything but what it was, a hit. It's a two-pronged message from them. The first is to us, the public, and that message is, we're in control and we don't give a fuck what you think. You're powerless. The second message is to anyone connected with Jeff Epstein who might be inclined to sing. Dead men tell no tales. And no matter where you are, we can get you. They sure proved that, didn't they? How did America get to this point? Huh? They call those, those moron shooters in El Paso and Dayton domestic terrorists? They're just fucking head cases, psychotics. The guys who had Jeffrey Epstein murdered, those are the real domestic terrorists. Intimidation at a level no one could even imagine. But hey, the FBI is investigating. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging with me once again. That bonus episode I promised... An amazing and insane true story featuring me, a supermodel with epilepsy, a psychotic drunk, two cops, and some hyperviolence set in a famous Chinese restaurant in New York City. It will be posted shortly, I promise, at patreon.com slash thatlarryshow. For more content and commentary, slide over to thatlarryshow.com, and while there, click a subscribe button. Stitch your Android, Apple, I don't care, so that way you never miss an episode. I'll be back this weekend for a new Sinner Sunday, so come hang with us and have some cold beer, hot ribs, and a look at things on the spiritual side. Until that time, take no shit. Uh -huh.